Nothing's gonna come my way to the gentle clue that I hold your side. I want something that's gonna last. I wanna live and forget the past. I know this change is gonna do me good. I know this change is gonna do me good. Even though it hurts me now, I know it makes me good. I want you to let me know. You gotta come to let me know. Don't hold back now. Give me a sign. I know this change is gonna do me good. I know this change is gonna do me good. Even though it hurts me now. I know I know if it changes and it's going away, I'm feeling better than me. I'm all of my bad and all of my bad. Productions on Blog Talk Radio and FreeConferencing.com and Ustream, establishing and maintaining relationships that are deemed by me. Aloha and welcome to tonight's uh, Intimacy, Contra, and Relationships Technique Fulfilled. Tonight we're going to be talking about Circle of Influence Relationships. Tonight we uh, have um, Dr. Daniel Pacheco. Aloha, uh, uh, Daniel. Hello. And, and thank you for being here. And we also have Shalise. Uh, both all the way uh, out of Arizona. Hello, Shalise. Hello. Uh, and I, I call this uh, Shalise Stinson, uh, who is also an RN as well, um, finished up a doctoral degree at, a at ASU, at Arizona State University. And then we also, of course, have tonight's Tom Trika, uh, uh, Lorraine Lurch, all the way. Well, tonight you're in Wisconsin, is that correct, Lorraine? I am. Yes, I am. It's been windy here. Oh, really? <laughs> it's a nice night for Halloween. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, been, it's been cloudy here. It has been windy, but I, I, that I know of, but it's been cloudy. So. Anyway, I want to thank all of you for being here, and we are, we're going to talk to uh, to all of you guys some more about the circle of influence relationships. Um, in the meantime, I do want to give a big aloha to all of our underwriters that help make this uh, show happen from week to week, month to month, year to year. Beginning with Maha Dikini Lore at www.mahadikini.com. Maha Dikini Lore's life has been a personal journey exploring sexuality and spirituality for over 20 years. She's a certified tantric counselor and a tantric healer and a certified mind sound teacher. Maha Dikini Lore is also a, mar a graduate of Margot Nan's year long sky dancing tantra facilitator training program, as well as a current member of the, of the American Association of Sex Educators, Counselors, and Therapists Club, as well as a uh, charter member of the Association of Sexual Energy Professionals. She regularly attends trainings and, and conferences to keep current with the latest research and information on sexual education. <clears throat> and then we have the 90-day Ascension Journey at 
90dayascensionjourney.com. When you sign up for the 90 Day Ascension Journey, you will be facilitated with defining and redefining your soul to life purpose. You will be assisted with finding out what ascension means to you. On this journey, you will be provided with tools, techniques, and assistance to empower you to connect and reconnect with yourself, your emotions and feelings, and your mind, body, and spirit. Your universal soul center process you will be going through a lifelong transformation that will allow you to move forward with your endeavors and never look back if you dare. And for those of you that are interested, <coughs> I, um, I took the time a few months ago to write the, the book version of this to supplement this journey. So if you want to go to spiritualimageproductions.com, spiritualimageproductions.com, or on the 90 Day Ascension Journey, 90 Day Ascension Journey, Dot com. You can go there. There's a gift uh, of the book you can click there that'll take you to a page where they'll give you more information, or you can order it from there or from Amazon.com or also Kindle if you wish. In the meantime, <coughs> our, 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 our next and last um, um, underwriter for the night is Star, uh, the 2016 Star Wars USA UFO Symposium: Art, Music, and UFOs: An Evolution of Human Consciousness. At www.starworksusa.com. <coughs> Join us for the sixth annual Star Wars USA UFO Symposium: Art, Music, and UFOs: The Evolution of Human Consciousness, Consciousness at the Aquarius Casino Resort in Laughlin, Nevada, from the 11th to the 13th of this month, or excuse me, next month, um, to be hosted by Paula Harris, who we're actually going to be bringing on to interview this Sunday. So, if you want to get to know her, um, that that would be a good time to do so. She's producer of Star Wars USA. She's also an investigative journalist and author. And then also Ronald James, uh, Ron James, a host and founder of Eyeball TV. The weekend includes a dinner gala, a two-day buffet, and, and other speakers including Karen Ong, Karen Grisham Nickel, who, who we've already interviewed, and then Mike uh, Bella, Erica Lukes, Jennifer Stein, Paul Davis, Douglas Taylor, Barbara Lamb, Dr. Stephen Gray, Ricardo Gonzalez out of Peru, and Giuliano Falciani out of uh, Italy. So if uh, you happen to be there and uh, you happen to see us, give us a big high five and let us know that you're here and, uh, and um, um, we'll just go from there. So, anyhow, <coughs> welcome uh, to the show, um, Dr. Daniel and also Shalice. Uh, thank you for being here. So, if you guys can uh, just give us a bit, a bit of, of, of a bio of who you guys are, <clears throat> kind of, you know, how, kind of where you grew up at, how you got into medicine, and, and how you got to where you're at now, and then go from there. How's that? <clears throat> um, sure, I'll, I'll go ahead and start, and then Charlotte can can add to it. Um, okay. I, I initially started off as a mental health therapist. Uh, I grew up in original Texas and went to study and got my master's in counseling psychology, worked a lot of uh, inpatient, outpatient facilities. I realized I wanted to kind of move on to bigger things to be able to help more people, and I was fortunate enough to get accepted into the University of New Mexico Medical School, uh, and eventually came to Arizona to work, uh, to do my residency as an internal medicine physician, and eventually become a hospitalist in, uh, in within the, the Banner Health System, and moved up the ranks to some of the administrative and corporate stuff, uh, all the while, I was trying to incorporate the mental health, behavioral health aspect of medicine. And doing that, and some of the work I did in the hospital, and I met with uh, Charlotte in one of our facilities, we kind of had some very similar interests in our own personal journeys of, of change, in particular in weight loss. And that kind of led to a talking of ideas and the blossoming and creation of Vita Wellness, which is a medical weight loss center. Um, and really more of a, uh, overall trying to help people better themselves and create the, the real person that they want to be and reach their goals. So we really try to do a little bit different and treat the whole person, the mind and body and achieving their goals and with a focus on weight loss for now, expanding to other areas, uh, soon. Right, right. And so, and, and now, what made you decide to get into the mental health, uh, arena? <coughs> Uh, initially, uh, it's always fascinated me human behavior as a young child. Why people did things, why were we driven to do certain things. And so that interest um, that I developed in undergraduate studies, but even early on, I was getting psychology today when I was like 14, 15 years old for some strange reason. And that fascinated me human behavior and so it, it, there's a natural inclination and wanting to help others um, really kind of drove me into going to that field. And, and, and what did your parents, what did your parents do when you were growing up? 
<coughs> uh, my dad is a steel worker, retired steel worker, and my mother was a homemaker. Okay, got it. And so you grew up in, in New Mexico, or you grew up somewhere else? I grew up in El Paso, Texas, um, lived in northwest of Seattle for a while, um, in my 20s, and then went to medical school in Albuquerque, New Mexico, right. and then eventually settled down here in Arizona. Oh, got it, got it, yeah, which is where you, where you and I met uh, a few weeks ago. So, Shadows, um, and thank you very much, uh, Dr. Daniel. Uh, Shadows, go ahead, well, well, just um, wherever you want to start at. <coughs> Yeah, so um, I was actually born and raised in Oregon, um, so I'm from the Pacific Northwest, and I um, moved out to Arizona um, later, probably late late teens, and then um, just kind of actually um, have been going back and forth. I spent a lot of time still in Oregon as well. My family um, still resides, so um, I travel quite a bit back and forth. Um, Charles, are you one of those guys? Me? Yeah. Really? Holy cow, Batman! What part of what part of Oregon did you grow, uh, grow up at? I I was born in Eugene, but I grew up in an itty bitty small town called Cottage Grove. Got it. Well, I got I got, I got lots of family out there in Eugene. That sisters, uh, uh, Ben, all kinds of things up there. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry, oh yes, yeah. yes, I have I have family in Ben. I have family all over the state. Mm -hmm. so, oh, wow. Yes, I spend as much time there as possible. <coughs> Don't, don't so, talk about the ducks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm actually heading to California next weekend to, to hit the ducks uh, USC game. So. <laughs> but um, I I am a diehard I am a diehard duck fan. But um, even though I you know attend ASU, but don't tell anybody. So um, yeah, so born and raised, and then you know came out here to Arizona. I uh, grew up with my with my father, and um, went into healthcare. And I actually had my um, oldest daughter uh, really, really young. So um, my my original plan was actually to be a physician right out of the gate. And then I had my daughter um, at a very early age. So then um, my you know my plans kind of shifted gears a little bit. And so um, you know now that I'm you know finishing my doctorate, just done it a little bit differently. But uh, come on, Shelly. You know, you know, it's not a little bit; it's a lot of bit for a kid, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, so I, you know, I went into um, you know healthcare and, and into nursing, and then you know emergency OB, um, substance abuse psychiatric. I did administration for years. Um, worked on the physician division where um, I helped a lot of physicians. Um, Kind of modify their behaviors in effort to um, create better patient experiences and have better um, quality outcomes. Uh, so I did that for several years, and then um, I've always been um, really, uh, you know, strong and, and had a, a real um, affinity for the uh, kind of substance abuse population. And so I've worked with methadone clinics and crisis centers and that sort of thing for years and years. And uh, so. Then, like like uh, uh, Dr. Tucker was saying, that you know we met at um, one of the facilities here in Arizona, and we um, did some consulting uh, together actually, and um, had an opportunity to travel internationally and do some um, various things uh, in China and um, all over the U.S. and uh, South America and some different places. So it's been pretty a uh, pretty great journey along the way. So nice, nice. And then so, now we have the, the wellness center, so, so things are great. So let me ask you this, what, and, and we have plenty of time, you guys, by the way, just, just let me know. Uh, so, first of all, what, what did your parents do? Um, so my, my father owned, uh, he was in the military, um, and then he owned businesses, uh, insurance, primarily insurance um, companies. Oh, oh, what, 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 and, uh, and my mother... What branch was he in? <coughs> Uh, Air Force. Oh, Air Force. Okay, nice. And then, and then, and then, my mother um, was a musician, actually. Really? And did she get any? She got any albums out? No. She actually, she she used to. She hasn't done that for quite some time. But um, she she used to, and she was all over the place in Alaska and Hawaii, and um, she she's kind of a free spirit hippie and. 
and all that that entails from Oregon, you know. Oh, interesting. <laughs> uh, I, I would yeah. never get that, but okay, that's fine. And, and so now, <laughs> now, now um, what do we think? Go ahead. I said that maybe we get shots the same one as Joe's down the road. Oh, goodness, no. I did not, I did not get that. <laughs> so, um, so what, what, what made what made you decide to 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 um to do nursing to do to do the health work and also you need to work with substance substance abuse. Um. Well, I think well, actually, what kickstarted it was actually because I've been I was a teenage mother. So, um, I started working with teenage mothers and with um, uh, at-risk uh, youth very, very early on when I still was a teen. Um, and so, that just fueled my passion. And I've, just, I've done that ever since. So, since I was probably 18 years old, wow. 17, 18 years old, I've been working with that population and uh, just trying to... Um, Depending on you know who they are, what their situations are, just kind of helping them try to find um, you know the best ways to to combat their issues or or reach their goals or, or find you know um, better opportunities for their for their lives. Wow, wow. And so I mean, I, I'm assuming that your daughter wasn't involved in any, any type of stuff like that, but I'm assuming that you. You've seen that around her, uh, and so maybe you are wanting to work with that. Right? No, yeah, no, no. Um, I mean, I have, you know, I have seen plenty of substance abuse and, and all that stuff in, in my life, but no, my, um, you know, fortunately, my my um, daughter, you know, she's never never into any of that stuff. So I kind of I got lucky there. Yeah, no, because I mean, it just seems like you, you know, typically, um, well. Our ends are, are pretty good in mothers too, but but that's not the point. So, um, so anyhow, um, now Lori, do you got any questions for these guys at this point? <clears throat> well, I'm, I would like to know since both of um, our guests um, have a background in the medical world, and then now you're blossoming into this holistic. Thing. I, I, uh, um, I have a lot of frustration that westernized medicine to begin with, and I'm wondering if you have that same kind of frustration, or can you kind of do the best of both worlds? Yeah, and I can touch a, a little bit on that. So, uh, you know, in uh, when you go through medical school training, it is pretty much westernized, and there's not enough time to incorporate all points of view. So it is given one-sided, if you want to say that. Now, although University of New Mexico is progressive in the sense that I remember we had a shaman come and give a couple of guest lectures. We had a naturopath come and give a couple of <coughs> lectures. And I think that's more in response to the, the people looking for more of different alternatives than Westernized medicine, it's just, uh, especially you know, the acupuncture and other forms are more popular. But I think uh, a lot of the resistance you see is really we don't get presented with a lot of alternatives during our training because there's just not enough time. Even though four years of med school and then three to five years post medical school training, just to learn the human body, the anatomy, the physiology to treat medical conditions, it really limits to what they can offer other than this is how we do it. And I think you're seeing the evolution of that slowly as uh, more things are incorporated, aromatherapy is incorporated in some hospitals, uh, acupuncture is incorporated, naturopathic medicine is huge, so it, 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 uh, it's slowly making its way that we are still very Western, very pharmaceutical driven, uh, and part of it is the way our healthcare system is set up and outcome measures, and honestly, like medical liability, we do influence that also. Um, so, but I think you could have to change, but it is, Someone, if you're really looking for holistic or natural, and you go to a doctor, well, you're probably not going to get the best person for that because we're, we're taught a certain way. Mm -hmm. And would you say that the insurance companies have a lot of influence <coughs> over the, what's going on in hospital care? And uh, that they're both they have both and tied together? I mean, they, they have a, an influence per se, you know, in, uh, in the payment of certain things, but it really is, it's still a lot of physician driven and of it's evidence based is where the, you know, is this how we treat people 
and the best practices. And, you know, general insurance will pay for that. Now, you know, the healthcare system is a whole lot of uh, nuances to it that can influence. But for the most part, you know, when you go to a hospital, most hospitals have good physicians. You do what's right for the patient. Um, there's horror stories out there that I've been fortunate where I've worked where it's been patient-centered and doing what's best for the patient. Um, and I know, Charles, you opened a lot of the outpatient clinics. I mean, what influence did you see on that? Yeah, so, you know, really looking at, um, well, so I guess it's a little bit twofold. So um, to answer your first question, the frustration is definitely there, especially, you know, having traveled um, overseas and, 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 you know, visited several countries now, um, looking at different modalities and, and how, um, you know, things are practiced in other places. Um, there's definitely pros and cons, um, you know, on, on every side. But, um, uh, so it was, and especially, you know, being in China, in China twice. So really seeing some of that um, traditional medicine um, and some of the healing practices that happen there, you know, even to just um, like Tai Chi and some different things is, is really, really amazing. And, and being able to utilize some of those things here, um, like, you know, like yoga or Pilates or something, um, or a rehab, for instance. Because, like, personally, I had back surgery two years ago. So rather than um, doing traditional uh, physical therapy to rehab, you know, I did things a little bit differently. I did more of kind of, um, you know, in, in a sense, more of that um, kind of that yoga type of um, healing process versus just going you know, to a, a physical therapy um, center where, you know, you check in and you go through your exercises and then, you know, you pay your, your copay and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, to Daniel's point, it is, you know, in that sense, there, it's nice to have some options where it is patient-centered. I did have the ability to choose, um, you know, what my treatment plan afterwards was. So that was nice, um, having that. Can I ask what, what kind of uh, yoga you were doing? So, well, I was doing, I was doing just, you know, some, some pretty basic, um, you know, standard yoga and then some Pilates and then also some, um, <coughs> some really, um, in, uh, there was, uh, I had a specific trainer, actually, a trainer is a really good friend of ours that we work with um, at the Wellness Center. Um, and he was helping me through some high intensity interval training as well, um, with some, uh, resistance, some body weight resistance training as well. So I was doing, um, a variety of things. So standard, uh, standard so saying that you were, name. standard saying that you were doing Hatha yoga, is that what I hear you saying? <coughs> yeah, it wasn't like Bikram yoga or anything like that. So, no. um, you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything super fancy. Um, no, no. So, um, I interviewed I interviewed a guy about a year about a year year and a half ago, uh, Bob Ram. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's uh he worked for ABC. He was a news reporter for them, and and was overseas. Somehow he cracked his back, and he was literally in, in a whole um, uh, cast body cast, and um and then he started using the Hatha yoga. I believe it was Hatha yoga to start healing his body, and now he teaches Hatha yoga. They told him he would never get out of, you know, oh. he would never be out of the cast. He would never uh, walk right again or anything like that. And and now he teaches Hatha yoga or teaches yoga to people, to people all over all over the country. Yeah, yeah. And 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 um, actually, I was just um, one of our clients actually was just telling me how she um, just went to um, some Bikram yoga the other day, and you know, and she and now she absolutely loves it and feels amazing mm -hmm. because of it so um you know like daniel was saying it's really you know it's, it's um people who were never really open to trying those sorts of things are are really starting to open open up and be more um experimental with, with that type of um well, we say alternative but really it's, um you know natural type exactly. of, of healing or um other other modalities but um so when you were asking about like the, the outpatient or the um, the ambulatory division, so when we when we designed those, it was truly to look at um, the convenience of the patient and what the patient would want. So we looked at you know things like colors and what you mentioned of aromatherapy and comfort. 
and those sorts of things um, convenient. So where everything could be in one one location, whether that was you know traditional weaponized medicine of like imaging and um, you know your your labs and, and that sort of thing, but it was a convenience factor. And then um, and then if you had you know a, a request to go somewhere else or whatever the position um, or provider could give you um, a referral to you know to go and to do something special like I did. Um, with my rehab. So that was a really nice option that we started implementing into those um, centers. And then, um, you know, with, with the insurance piece, um, you know, that you mentioned, it, you know, it kind of, it comes back to like what, what Daniel was saying is really the physician, the physician driving it and, and really talking to that patient and finding out what um, is best for, you know, for that care plan, what is best for um, the goal that you're trying to achieve. But then with the insurance, it has to, you have to ensure that you're coding it correctly so that it gets paid. Um, you know, everything comes down to, um, you know, basically how things are, how things are coded. And then also because we, when, you know, on the back side, we look at to make sure that there's not readmission and we make sure that people are staying healthy. Otherwise, the insurance won't pay. Um, and so we start to get into um, all kinds of financial difficulties there. So um, what I want to do right now, I'm going I'm to open up the line. Um, there's a caller here, Eric, about 619. Aloha, you're on the air. Hi, hi there. Yes, uh, who are we speaking to? My name is Paula. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. Can you, do, you, do you have a, 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 a head, headset or do you have a... Yes. Can you take that off the speakerphone because we can't hardly hear you. Okay. Yeah, I did. Okay, that's off, better. Thanks. Off speaker. Now, who are we talking to? Where are you located at? And how did you hear about it? <clears throat> yeah. Well, I listened to the I listened to the blog talk and I am located in um, San Diego. Okay. And what's your first name? My name is Donna. Okay, Donna. And do you have a question for our guest tonight? Yes. Yeah, I was wondering what their thoughts on chelation therapy was. Well, how about that? And I wanted to get their opinion on the box. So, so I'm Dr. Mm -hmm. Pacheco, and I'm an internal medicine doctor. And, and that, there's a lot of that. There's oh. a, um, a whole lot of uh, hard evidence on that. I mean, what I yes. do research looking at that, there seems to be quite a bit of anecdotal evidence supporting its use. In some instances, I mean, you see it used in everything from cancer to autism yeah. to Crohn's. Yes, yeah. um, Alzheimer's, big time. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so there's a school of thought that yeah. if it helps remove certain particles in the body, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's what it is. I mean, a lot of um, a lot of cancer, I believe, is a lot of chemicals, a lot of aluminum, metals, all the toxins, especially for the brain, you know, for the Alzheimer's, and you know, all that. You give it that, yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I mean, I think it's worth looking at. So, Donna, um, I, I want to thank you for stopping by. Right now, we're not, we're, we're focusing on relationships more than therapy, or um, uh, chance of therapies. So, I want to thank you. Oh, my God. But, uh, we are, I'm so sorry. But, but uh, we, we are bringing, uh, Shadis and Dr. Daniel back in, in January. So if you want to be there, sign up for a SIPS Divine oh, email list um, right. or, or check that, we're going to be bringing them back yeah. and we're going to be more uh, focused on, on medical treatments and, and all okay. that, type of, that, that, that type of stuff. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Donna. Well, 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 Andrew, I was just fascinated with chelation therapy. I've heard about it, but I, I would like to know what it is and what it does for someone. <laughs> just so we can answer that question for me, please. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm no, I'm no expert on that, but it, it's a, a form of therapy where there's an infusion of certain, uh, of whether it's high-dose vitamins or a certain solution that's supposed to bind to heavy metals. There's a school of thought that we put in a lot of toxins in our body, whether it's uh, aluminum, or a stuff that, that, uh, that we get through our, our food sources, and that that can cause some disease. Now, there's certain school of thought there, and there's some evidence to that. But chelation is a, a therapy that some people do 
to try to cure certain illnesses, whether it's cancer, autism, thinking that it's too much of a certain toxic metal. <coughs> and there is an, um, again, Western medicine's point of view, my point of view, there isn't a whole lot of hard evidence, but there is a, a lot of anecdotal stuff that people, some people seem to get better on it, uh, some people don't. Um, I used to be a cancer hospital, so the MD Anderson, so my, uh, my vision is a little skewed of what I've seen of some of the results of that. But it's a common, uh, technique that some places do and advertise to offer that services where they help give you chelation <coughs> therapy to help remove these toxins from your body for lack of a better description and hopefully resolve the underlying the disease, whether it's Alzheimer's, cancer, or Crohn's, which is a GI or colon issues and stuff like that. But I'm far from an expert on this, but that is a common to use. It's oftentimes it's people try that first um, in hopes of getting a natural uh, treatment. I see it as a, allowing the body to kind of heal itself in a sense. Um, kind of. It makes the school of thought is if you remove certain toxins that mm -hmm. may or may not be there, but that that's the school of thought and it helps do that. Okay, well, thank you. That's very helpful. <clears throat> so, um, what I want to do next, and um, is just take a little breather, um, and just um, play some music by Shamanatrix uh, Missy Galore from the album Shamanatrix Missy Galore. Um, it, it, it's a short song called Life Is, um, and I want to send out love, blessings, healing, dangers of light and love to all those here on the phone lines in the chat room. To all our family and friends, to our vehicles that help take care of us, to our places residents that help take care of us, to all the animals and the plants and the, and the kids um, on the planet, especially especially the ones in need of return to the court of the president of the United States, his family, to all the people running for office who definitely need some help, that is everybody, so, and all the, all the people that are working with them. Uh, anybody, uh, anybody, anyone you guys want to add to this? <coughs> Lorraine? Um, no. All right. Dr. Daniel? Uh, just a family and friends. Okay. Chalice? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So, to every, uh, and also to all the minerals on the And to everyone else in need of concern, we will be back again. Life is by Shaman Matrix Matrix, uh, Missy Galore from the album Shaman Matrix Missy Galore. And, um, we'll be back. Life is what you make it to People get me off and don't take it Think you see you make it It's what you make it Life is what you make it People get me off and don't take it Think you see you make it it's what you make me like it is. Faith is your And it ain't that Don't be Thank you. 
And we're back. This is Andrew Love Alive out of Flagstaff, Arizona with Spiritual Image Productions on Block Talk Radio and FreeConferencing.com and Newsstream, establishing and maintaining right relationships through the human body. <coughs> Hello again to and welcome to tonight's Intimacy, Time Training, Relationships, Sexually Fulfilled. Tonight we're talking about the Circle of Influence Relationships with Dr. Dr. Daniel Pacheco and uh, Shalice uh, Stinson. Uh, all the way out of Arizona, and then we also have our in-house Tom Trika, um, uh, Mara Dixmini Lore, all the way out of um, well, all the way out of Wisconsin today. But that's the other one. You know, uh, we're back. Um, earlier we were talking about uh, Dr. Uh, Daniel, who grew up. Grew up <coughs> well, he uh, he went to school in in uh, New Mexico, and um, um, he spent a, lo uh, a lot of time. With men, in the men, mental health department and other areas of working with people, and then we also talked with uh, Shalice, who grew up in uh, in uh, Oregon. Uh, uh, well, started out in Oregon, and then uh, now you ended up here in, in Arizona afterwards. Is that correct, Shalice? Correct. And uh, and uh, went into nursing and has had a whole journey in the area of nurse of the nursing field, and now both of them <coughs> have um. Somehow they, they connected, they hooked up, and um, they formed a company called Vita Wellness. And so, so what I want to do now is go into um, cir the circle of the influence of relationships. What, what, what's that mean? What, what are you talking about? How, how do you define that? <coughs> um, I'll start um, a little bit. If you guys want to jump in, um, the way you kind of talk about it. Is uh, it's an exercise of who do you spend the most time with, who uh, do you talk to the most, and typically the top five people. Let's uh, start with that. And are they a plus or minus in your life? So the circle of influence is who we hang around with and has a direct impact on our lives socially, psychologically, financially, <coughs> relationship-wise, and whether it's and whether well-being. Weight loss, whether it's weight gain, um, and relationships. So it has a direct impact. And now it's not overtly obvious, but the, the people that you spend the most time with or talk to, they exert a subtle influence or pressure on you. And it impacts, and it does influence you in certain directions. There's a lot of studies that if you hang around with people, let's say that new substances, the, the chances of you doing that go up exponentially. If you hang around people who are divorced and you're married, your chances of getting divorced. Go up. <laughs> so we talk about an approach of whether it's your behaviors or a losing weight, and even in that setting, and that's kind of some of the influence and, and examining that in, um, and how do we change some of the influence that one is exposed to. So now, does does uh, does yourself count? Hang around with yourself. Does that count? Well, you know, with your, your own thoughts, and sometimes it's a plus or minus with me. So I don't know if my own self is going to get into it. No, uh, on a more more um, serious note, uh, and I, I I I think 
Well, I don't know. I, I, I guess it, you, you can answer this in the way that you know how. But what, what about uh, what, like having conversations with God, or you know, with your higher self, or angels, or leprechauns, or fairies, or gnomes, or whatever? How does that how does that fit, in, fit into this circle of influence, or does it? <coughs> Well, I think from my perspective, you know, it, it does have an influence because that's something therapeutic and positive. It's another belief in something greater than yourself. It, it's a plus in your life. Uh, it helps to, as a stress relief almost, but it helps to know that there's something greater, that I'm part of something bigger, that I'm not just here by myself. I and mean, psychologically, it's very reassuring and beneficial. That's, that's a warm, comforting feeling. Uh, to have that, whether it's God, whether it's nature, uh, whether it's the universe, whether it's angels, whatever you believe in, it's something for good and that helps you be able to express yourself, or even if it's meditation and that helps you bring peace and calm into your mind, which influences your body, that definitely is uh, a major plus. And you see a lot of recovery programs that do talk about a spirituality, not religion, but spirituality and positiveness. Um, would you agree with us, Sean? Yeah, absolutely. And um, so, and I think, you know, even going back to, you know, when you were saying um, about hanging out with yourself, and I think, it, I, honestly, it goes back to, um, you know, a lot of people do spend a lot of time alone, but it's then you have to ask, what are your thoughts? Um, you know, are you, you know, are you spending time thinking about um, positive things? And, and what is your, your you know, record that, you know, what is the recording that's playing in your head, what are you saying? Is it is it a positive um, message that's playing, or is it is it beating you down? And I think that's the um, you know that's the important question to ask because ultimately that's you know that's what um, influencing your you know your behaviors because thoughts turning you know turn into behaviors um, you know which you know is, is action. So and that will kind of manifest. So I think regardless of you know if it's um, you know, like what you're saying with prayer, or if it's meditation, or if it's truly just, um, you know, you know, singing in the shower, or, you know, whatever that case may be, um, it, it's what is the message. <coughs> got it, got it. So, uh, go ahead. Um, so, Lorraine, do you have any questions around this as well? So, I'm hearing that, um, well, let me ask this. How do you apply uh, what you call the circle of relationships <coughs> to the work, the circle of influence, to helping your, uh, you know, the people who come to you? You mean clients? Well, you know, <coughs> yeah, the clients. So one of the, the exercises that we, we do is we have a, you know, do the list of five people, and by the, the name of this individual or the relationship, a plus or a minus. <coughs> And most of people know is this relationship a plus or minus in my life. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes we hang around people that are the most positive. They may be negative. And in weight loss, this is really huge. It has a huge impact. Or it makes mm -hmm. it any life change. And then we talk about what okay, so that influence or the person you're around. What can we do once to minimize the impact? And or even if we can avoid that type of situation or individuals because the goal is to try to make you create your best self. So once we identify this, and oftentimes it's difficult to discuss. Sometimes it's spouses. Sometimes it's yeah. parents. Sometimes it's siblings that are very negative, uh, that put a lot of negative thoughts into you, that are toxic, that are toxic themselves in a sense, that have a lot of issues. And that has yeah, to be in, in the home. Yes. And we see it me and Chuck in numerous cases where we can see why they turn to food, why they turn to substances. Because they're, they've been crushed in a sense, they're influenced in such a, a negative way that they lost themselves. And they are just doing what they can to get by and <coughs> survive almost. And so this brings to light some discussions about that and even just awareness that this has a major impact on you. Um, not just at a, at a surface level, but at a very deep, uh, deeper level. And then how do we <coughs> change that? And then how do we recognize that? And then that's where we work from there and really um, try to help people change. When people start changing, that impacts everyone else, because we're an influence. That person is an influence. So, you know, we're trying to, we try to build <coughs> on that, but really, quite honestly, it's, a, it's an eye-opening exercise, 
because it oftentimes is some, uh, you open up some uh, questions that they themselves had. Is this person really good for me? And they're never fully addressed. Huh. Right. Have you ever had where there was a, uh, let's say, a spouse and the spouse was really negative and wasn't adding anything to that person's life? Um, I'm reading a lot about like <coughs> narcissists and you know people who become involved with those types of, of individuals and how they just literally destroy their lives. So, what would your recommendation be for something like that? Well, that, that's, yeah, we see a, a lot of uh, relationships that definitely are negative impacts on some people, mm -hmm. whether it's overtly, you know, critically critical, <coughs> you know, you're feeling starting to quit, uh, you're fat, you're lazy, or <coughs> in the most subtly passive aggressive way. Oh, I know you're on a diet, but I just bought the, I bought a pizza because, you know, that way you don't have to cook. Or, you know what, no, don't go to the gym, I want you to be here with me tonight. And so the real question, and Michelle has had a lot of discussions, is we don't encourage people to get out of a relationship. In fact, we try to bring them in if we can. And uh -huh. If we're a bad person and work with it, because a lot of times so many people don't even know maybe why they're doing that. There's, there's a power shift in differential when somebody starts to change. When the, when the spouse quits drinking or when the person quits <laughs> drinking or when they still, the fear, yes, a lot of fear around <clears throat> these weight. Um, there's a change in the fear to that. Um, and so we, we try to work at bring in the partner, if possible, to do that. But I know me and Shaft many times have, have had concerns about some relationships and you can see like, wow, this is really, the spouse is going to make it very hard for this individual to try to change because there's a lot of fear behind that. Well, and then, and then too, you'll see, um, where there's just, um, a lot of, you know, unfortunately, there's just a lot of dishonesty where there'll be, um, you know, whether somebody, you know, will, um, you know, have, um, you know, eat, uh, you know, something, um, you know, kind of like closet eating. They'll, they'll eat, you know, uh, cookies or the pizza or something on the way home so that the staff doesn't know about it. Um, and then, you know, because we, we treat, um, we treat a lot of couples, um, together and individually. And of course, you know, we have <coughs> confidentiality and that sort of thing. And so, you know, we have, you know, individuals who will share information with us that they have not shared with each other. And, um, and it's, just, and it's really, really fascinating because, you know, they may have been together for, you know, 20 years, but, you know, one is, you know, one is maybe, um, you know, just doing, you know, has eating behaviors that the other one doesn't know about, or the other one has maybe shopping behaviors that the other one doesn't know about. Because <coughs> based on fear, based on fear of what the other one might say or do. Um, and so we try to work through those um, kind of obstacles and barriers to try to get, um, you know, kind of that foundation or, or to get that, um, that relationship, uh, I guess, a little bit um, more solid so that the success can be there so they can work through that together. Because um, I mean, ultimately, like, like Daniel was saying, that we you know, try to <coughs> work with them together to, to have everyone working um, on goals um, to achieve that um, ultimately so that they can um, be successful together because, you know, obviously we don't want anybody to, to, to not, you know, um, you know, end up or, you know, whatever in, in, a, in a relationship that that's just healthy. But that's another thing, too, is, you know, we, we can deliver some some difficult messages if we do see something that's very toxic. And um, and we've had some, some significant um, situations where <coughs> truly the health was at risk. Um, health was at risk, um, mental health and physical health um, was at great risk. And so we had to have some difficult conversations um, with some individuals about um, the influence about the um, the influence of you know the family and the, the the significant other and you know and if that continued down that road of you know what that could end up looking like and it wasn't you know it wasn't a good prognosis so you know that that's kind of the the downside of what we do is you know, sometimes you do have to deliver some some not so great messages but um but it's important because if you do look around. Um, and, and you see, you know, who your friends and your family are. Um, are they supporting you? Are they encouraging you? Are they trying to bring you down? Um, are they, and why? 
you know, what what's the what's behind it? And like we were saying before, a lot of it is fear. Fear of are they gonna leave me, fear of rejection, fear of I'm not good enough, fear of well if they get better then what does that mean for me? Um, fear of the unknown. So it's a lot of those questions that we try to help answer. So you're saying that after a number of years of people living, breathing, being with each other, they still aren't transparent with each other uh, to a great deal and uh, to the point of even being dishonest and lying to each other. And so um, so it makes it difficult for them to, to progress, to, to succeed in whatever they're trying to accomplish or work with or deal with. And um, now the, the other question, um, is, and, and, I mean, is, is it correct to say that? Is that true? Is it, is it safe to say that? <clears throat> well, definitely, yeah. We see a lot of that. And it's not that people are bad or, or evil. It's just we fall into certain patterns. And, you know, like everybody, we're <laughs> human. We don't want people to know certain things. So we hide stuff. We, we lose. Maybe communication breaks down. Or that transparency is there. But, uh, again, it's a one of the guys. Yeah, don't want to be judged or don't want to create any problems. So they just kind of do it secretly. So now, one of the basic foundations that I work with when I deal with people, uh, whether it be on the show or otherwise, on the mentoring, the 90 day ascension journey, um, is I, I tell them that the, the five, the five, the five, um, things that, 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 that keep uh, the relationship healthy, um, for the most part, no blaming, no complaining, no lies, no threats, and no name calling. And, uh, and maintaining a right, uh, right, healthy relationship um, with each other. So now, um, other um, a, a, a years ago, I went, I went uh, to the Flagstaff Film Festival. I watched a documentary on um, I can't remember, but uh, it had to do with with um, adoption of um, that. Um, where, where, where is it that the, these these kids live? A foster, a foster home syndrome. I have. I think that's what it's called. Have you, have you heard of that before? <coughs> no. No? Uh, I, I believe it was called the foster home syndrome. And um, basically the techniques, <coughs> and, and some of these kids were, were uh, uh, violently abused. I mean, uh, to the point that they were like like killing their cats and destroying their pet animals or their, 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 uh, their, um, their stuffed animals and I mean, and all kinds of rare, bizarre behavior. And so, uh, a lot of the techniques that they employed uh, or used for dealing with those kids uh, are, 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 for the most part, are tantric techniques. Uh, hugging, uh, non-violent communication, boundary setting, um, and I, I was just, uh, and I don't know all the others, I don't remember all the others, but, but it was along those same lines. And so, um, I thought that was pretty bewildering. That, that, that these people were, um, were uh, you know, were, were working on that level in the same way, and yet, uh, they didn't call it tantra, they called it, uh, um, you know, whatever, whatever they call it for, 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 for the dealing with these kids. So, is, is that, are those a, a similar or same, uh, techniques that you employ with, with your, your clients as well? <clears throat> uh, well, for, for Rita Wellness, I mean, one of the biggest things I think we just start off with and working is communication, really, and being able to talk and express themselves. I think a lot of people are, are, are fearful of expressing how they really feel. And so they turn inward. Um, ours is more in the communication and the verbal communication. Again, encouraging the physical contact, which is an important piece of it. But uh, initially, when people start changing, a lot of times they express their thoughts. Um, a lot of self esteem issues come into play with um, people trying to make a change, and particularly overweight. And so a lot of times it's just getting really stressed and feel worthy of, uh, of doing that and saying things that they believe or that they want to be heard is, I think, the biggest uh, area where we work on uh, with that. Got it, got it. Shalise? Yeah, and, um, you know, to Dan, something else that, um, Difficult. We always, you know, what we always say when, you know, when we look at weight loss, we look at, um, and we're just talking weight loss specifically. People come to us just straight for life coaching, just to, you know, talk about goals and relationships and whatever, not necessarily even weight loss. But <clears throat> when we do look at weight loss, we, we kind of look at it from the shoulders up is about 95% of it. So if we can focus on 
their head, you know, their mental, um, you know, their, their kind of their mental status and, and kind of where they are emotionally, <coughs> then we can break through into the physical. And so something um, that we really, really, really focus on is, uh, is just kind of that self-esteem and really tapping into um, where those, you know, where those breakdowns are, where those hurts are, um, and, and what um, kind of the root cause is. And so whether that, like you said, whether that's the communication, whether that's um, the true self-image. Um, so we have a variety of exercises that, um, that we help, um, you know, people use not only in the clinic, but then take home and give them homework so that they can begin to change, like when I was talking about those messages earlier and those recordings that we play in our own heads over and over and over. So if you stop and think about what are our thoughts, what, what, you know, when we're quiet, what do we hear? Um, so we get people to pay attention to what those voices are saying. Um, and then if they're not saying anything nice, um, which for most people they're not, um, how do we shut that off? And then how do we flip that message into saying um, something um, that is great, something that is nice, something that is um, positive and encouraging and reassuring? So, you know, we help with that. So that in turn can open up a whole um, whole yeah. other, you know, avenue for whether that's communication or, or love or openness or whatever with their spouse or whatever. Because a lot of times, um, if you can tap in just to that individual and what kind of holding them back, then, then that will kind of open the floodgates for, you know, other issues that follow. Right, right. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up another, another phone line. Uh, air code 831, I love how you're on the air. Oh, hello. Um, uh, what, I, I'm, I'm just fully enjoying listening. Oh, okay. Uh, well, what's your name? Where, where are you located at? And how did you hear about it? Oh, hi. Well, you know, I'm, I'm Carol, and uh, I'm in Santa Cruz, and uh, I just heard about you from BTR. Okay. And did you have a question for these guys? <clears throat> um. Can you read into anything at all? Uh, we're not doing readings tonight, Carol. Um, okay. that, that won't be for another uh, few weeks, uh, about three weeks. Kids. But um, but right now we're we're, um, okay, that's, that's we're doing a relationship show. But is there anything on relationships that you wanted to talk about that you might want to go over? Well, it's a lot to sort out. <laughs> well, how, how about just one one simple thing? How about how about one simple thing that you would want to look at and address right now? How about that? <clears throat> I'm not really sure what it would even be. <laughs> uh, it's a complicated situation. It's a, a very complicated situation. And a situation well, what, Carol, what, what you can do, um, if, the, if these guys want to get a hold of you, uh, Dr. Daniel and, and Shellis, um, they can go, yeah, you can go to the www.vita, and that's B-I-T-A, wellness.net. You can go there, uh, and if there, if, now, if there's a, if, is there, if, if there's a more serious pertinent question, uh, that Carol might want to have for you, uh, where, where can they get, hold, she get hold of you at? <clears throat> but you can definitely start off with a website, and they have an email, they send us an email, and we can get up that way. Um, if there's any particular specific questions, uh, you can contact us and I can give you a phone number or you can put it on the website there. And then you can definitely get a call to me or shout. I'm more than happy to ask your questions uh, to individuals out there. I mean, we're here to try to help others. Yeah, so if there's any more, anything serious that you want to go over and that you might want to um, work with, Carol, that probably would the best, be the best thing. And if not um, with them, then of course you can all, and depending on the situation, on the relationship, uh, situation, you could always call uh, Lore um, at uh, www.mahadikini.com um, or um, now is, there, is there a different place you would want to, them to get, uh, get her or for her to get hold of you at uh, Lore or is that the best place? Um, no, the website is good or, you know, always uh, phone call and sometimes available if I don't pick up, um, you can always leave a message in a return number. 
What's the phone number that uh, you would like? Uh, the phone number is uh, the area code 415 in San Francisco, 505-7230. Five zero five seven two three zero. And then, of course, if you wanted to get hold of me for something uh, on a different level uh, or maybe similar, same level, Carol, you can always call me Andrew Aloha. Uh, SpiritualImageProductions.com. You can go to my website, SpiritualImageProductions.com. All my my contact information is there, and you can get a hold of me there if you need. Okay. Are you okay with that, Carol? Yeah, I think there is one thing I would like to ask. But it takes a little, a minute or two to answer the backdrop to a question. So, you have a is question that, right? that you want to ask? Is that what I hear you saying? Yeah, but it takes a minute or two to set the backdrop to a question. Okay, so, so just, just, just keep it simple, Carol. That's all, that's all we need to do. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't bond easily and I found myself uh, bonding with this uh, man who, uh, we go to a mutual place and after some conversations I just found myself really bonding to him and I think it was mutual, I, I'm, I'm not sure but I think it was and uh, I, now I haven't seen him for a, about a week but I'm not really sure if that's a break in the pattern or what, and um, I feel a little bit out of control. Why so, Carol? Why so? Why do you feel out of control, Carol? I'm not, I'm not really sure. Uh, Dr. Daniel, I just feel out of control with my own emotions. I, I feel like my life is going along fine, and um, I wasn't really expecting this for one yet. And uh, there it is. And go ahead, Dr. Daniel. I I, I don't. So, so uh, one question, Carol. Have uh, have your previous relationships? How have your previous relationships been? Prior to this, not good. Not good. Um, or difficult. Um, I, I've, I've, I've had a lot of unhealthy relationships. The relationships I have now with friends are, are I have some very healthy relationships, but they're, they're very few. Yeah, and the reason I ask that is because I'm going to the other one. Really? With, with, with family and boyfriends and all that, it's, it's always been unhealthy, but I have a few very healthy relationships now, and I really cherish them. That's great, that's great. And it sounds like, you know, that's one thing we just asked, like, what was the previous pattern? Because sometimes we're drawn to some unhealthy things. Now, it sounds like this one has created a, a tidal storm of emotions in you to hear in your top. And there's nothing wrong with that. But that one of the first things that when I, when we work with somebody that's had a, a history of, of uh, bad relationships, is like, okay, is, am I attracted to some of the, uh, negative things that have hurt me in the past and I don't know that but it's just a question out loud and am I recreating some of it with this individual and exploring that so it sounds like it's been, it's been short but they're feeling it's pretty intense uh, for this and, and and it sounds like red flags are going up even internally for you um, just because of a kind of some concern I can hear in your voice with that so it, it really is important to look at is this, am I falling into the same thing or is, what is it that's driving me the emotions so strong in this individual? Is it probably talk to me? Is it emotional stuff? And uh, really ask yourself, are, are relationships supposed to augment or add to your life? Not create more stress. You know, although sometimes there's some ups and downs in all relationships, but really is the impact is supposed to be a positive. And, you know, we have more time and session, and I'll ask Charles to jump in, because that's my initial uh, <coughs> male reaction to it. And in much different from a female perspective, but that's kind of some of the, the thing I would want to explore more is kind of well, what's driving you to this and, and why such a strong response from this individual. Right, and thank you very no, much. Go ahead, Charlie. Go ahead, Charlie. It feels very, very, it feels very, very positive, actually. Okay, good. Great. See, and that's, that's actually where I was going with that, is because I think that's why she's so scared. It's probably because it is obvious. <coughs> And that's um, 
And that can be very, very, very scary if she's never had a positive relationship type or boyfriend type. And if she's bonded to somebody who she's, um, you know, who she's feeling that connection with, um, who could be a potential, that is very scary because it's the unknown. It's, uh, well, that's, that's not my pattern. That's not what I'm used to. Um, but you're, you've changed your pattern. You've changed your, um, your circle of influence, it sounds like. It sounds like you said you have some very positive people around you that you cherish. So now that's what you're attracting. I'm a firm believer in kind of the universe and, and laws of attraction. And so it, it, it sounds like you're attracting, you know, more positive people into your life. So perhaps this individual is positive and that's maybe scary to you because it's foreign. It's not, it's not something that you're used to. Oh, and thank you very much, Charlotte. Uh, no way, uh, no, uh, what do you got? Go ahead. Um, I was just kind of sitting here and, uh, you know, I was listening to, um, uh, is it, is it Karen? Is that what it is? Carol. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, and it kind of agree with, she, she leaves. Should we? 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 Should the things that are coming up for you around this relationship, you know, your fears, your feelings, the anxiousness, the anxiety, the tears, the uncertainty, and then what could be the positives for you around this relationship? And how long have you known this person? You said it's rather new. It is. Just uh, several weeks. Several weeks. And a month. And I, I don't know if I've been with anybody even for years. And for me to feel like this much intensity to one person is like very unusual for me. <laughs> so define bond. Is it something physical? Is it, is it an energy? Is it a mental thing? How are you feeling this bonding? And how is it showing up for you? It, 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 it feels, it, it feels more mental, but it feels like it's, like a strong magnet. The Pacific is so unhealthy, uh, I, it's almost like we almost, yeah, we can track kind of the same thoughts and energy, and so I think there's a matchup on some level, but I, I'm not sure that we can really go anywhere and do anything, and I'm not, you know, trying to lay anything out with can, but it's just kind of interesting what has transpired, and I would just kind of like to keep this person in my life, even if it's only with what we share on this level, and I'm not sure if he even got scared himself. <laughs> so now, th this is what I'm going to say, Carol, um, and thank you very much, Lord, because um, um, we got some other callers coming in, but um, um, Carol, what I'm picking up and sensing is that this guy, you, you've been involved with him for at least three other lifetimes. Okay, this is a past life relationship. Uh -huh. And, um, and, and, and there may have been a really good relationship, a, a relationship then as well. And so, um, and not only that, but I'm also sensing that this is a soulmate of yours. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that in a short amount of time you're, you're feeling the way that you're feeding, and now you feel, I'm assuming that you're feeling like you're, you, you've been abandoned because she's no longer there for the last week. Is that, is that what I hear you saying? Yes. Okay. So, um, uh, and, and right now, um, I, I mean, I know that that's not realistic, but that's how I feel. I know it's not realistic, but that's how I feel. But it's real. It's, it's, it's very real for you. Mind, so, 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 you know. Sure. It's very real for you, is that correct? But I mean, it's not based on anything in reality. Exactly. It's not necessarily uh, other, that. Yeah, <laughs> other than uh, <laughs> unconditional love. Okay, it's just unconditional love, and you've had some experiences with this person. You have history with this person prior to, 
And so, uh, and, and your, even though your, your, your conscious mind may not remember all that, your subconscious, unconscious, superconscious is. And so all your so cellular mem 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 memory of your body is remembering all that, and so you're connecting with all that. And whatever those prior uh, uh, experiences were prior to this lifetime, uh, you know, probably were really nice you know, um, uh, experiences. And so, but, but now you have possibly a new foundation for right, healthy relationships to to um, to to connect to that you haven't in a long time or ever. Uh, does that mean, and, and that's and, that, and that's what these guys, Dr. Gang and Chalice, are saying as well. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Very much so. So we're, we're going to bring these guys back in January to, to talk to them again. And again, if you want some more private consultations with them or with us, you, you can always uh, get a hold of us and go from there. Um, but I want to thank you for stopping by and sharing this with us and, uh, and, and come back and let us know how you're doing. Are you okay with that? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all of you for your business. Thank you. Aloha. Good luck to you, Carol. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha. So now we're going to bring in uh, Erica uh, 313. Aloha, you're on the air, Erica 313. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, who are we talking to? How are you here? Yes. Uh, yes, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. My name is Michelle. Um, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. And where, where, where are you located at and how do you, how do you hear about us? <coughs> um, I'm from Michigan and I'm part of this. Um, going through Block Park. And you're located at where? That's all. Where? In Mexico. You're in Mexico? Michigan. Oh, Michigan. Mich you, Michigan. Okay, Michigan. <laughs> and you said your name is Natalia? Uh, is, that, is that what I heard you saying? Michelle. Oh, Michelle. I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm I hearing you through a, 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 a wireless you speaker. Hear me yeah, no, yeah, that, that, yeah, just take it off the speaker, that'll help. But, um, Michelle, go ahead. What, what, what's your question? Um, I'm just trying to um, figure out um, a relationship and a specific person or if somebody else is coming or what, what's going on. Okay, so Michelle, you got to be more specific for us. We, uh, we're, we're, we're not doing psychic uh, and intuitive readings uh, tonight. Tonight we're, doing, uh, we're working with relationships and we've got Dr. Daniel and uh, Shalice out, out of Arizona and, and uh, my Virginia Lori out of uh, Wisconsin with us right now. So now, what's the question? What 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 is it that you need or want to address concerning relationships right now? Okay, I was I guess was I was um for me coming from um a spiritual life and so I was um I was taking through the cards and things like that. And I was just trying to figure out what because cards can be confusing sometimes. So I'm just trying to get clarification on what the relationship with a specific person or is this one is going to be somebody else. So that's what I was trying to get clarification. Okay, so so Michelle, uh, you need to be more specific. What, what are the dynamics with this relationship that you're talking about? Give us a couple of dynamics. Um, well, for me, I had probably, um, Stop talking to the person, period. And, um, and I'm still not talking to the person, but things seem like to be changing the atmosphere. I mean, I still see the person, but, um, but we're not, like, I see them as happy, or I see them like at work. Um, and things seem to be changing the atmosphere. Okay. Okay. And how long have you been involved with this person, uh, Michelle? Oh, uh, well, we stopped talking about a year and a half ago. Um, well, before that, it was about three years. Three years. And, and you were lovers, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So, Dr. Daniel, what do you got for, for, um, for Michelle? Um, yeah, it sounds like obviously there's something happened that, that, that 
What do you mean about, about changing the atmosphere or changing? Do you mean your feeling or are growing an intensity for this individual or do you guys communicate somehow? Could you elaborate a little more about the changing environment? What do you, what do you mean by that? Um, changing of the environment, it seems like he's, um, for me, I, I'm, I was in a forgiving spirit about six, seven, eight months ago, and we were, he was in this new spirit. And it's like, the spirit is changing. So, where are you? Like, okay, I'm the wrong, um, and let me try to communicate. But for me, I'm still learning. Like, I don't, I mean, I kind of feel like that's the spirit, but I'm not, I'm guarded. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, that, and that's common in right? hormone relationships when we get hurt, it comes when you might have been hurt. And, and time does give you perspective on relationships and your feelings even. You know, they evolve and they change based on your life experience, where you're at, and who's at. Um, and obviously you still have feelings, and if you see the individual also kind of makes it hard to, you know, forget the individual. Because uh, they're mm -hmm. constant stuff you see them pretty much every day. So I feel, so, I feel them at work and week. Um, yeah, which can be a plus reminder sometimes, right? So it's a constant reminder, or if it's something that, that if you have some good, good, uh, time to this if you have some good feelings for this person. Well, I, yeah, I do have good feelings for this person. It's just, um, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm guarded. So I don't, I'm not sure where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that's okay, and it's important because that's a natural, Defense mechanism we have. I think one of the things you gotta look at is if this person, you know, it's always a risk when you open yourself up, when you open your heart up and it gets hurt, it's always a risk to reopen that. But, you know, the way I see it, if we don't take a risk sometimes, we never get a chance to experience, you know, some wonderful things. And that's gonna be the decision. It sounds like that's where you have that impact. Do I move forward and reopen communication or, or reopen that door, which could be very scary. Um, or do I stay where I'm at? And the real question is, you know, which are you comfortable with and can you be in that situation? Um, either not talking to him or opening the door. And that's going to be, uh, again, I think, uh, the exercise of writing it on paper. What are the pros and cons of opening up that door again and putting myself at risk, um, with this individual, uh, with that? Um, Charles, your thoughts on Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. Um, and, I was thinking the same thing when you said um, that about it being hard if she's seeing him um, routinely. Because um, it can either, you know, uh, kind of bring up stuff or you know, it's harder to get over or, um, you know, so, so that's going to be probably the, the toughest part depending on um, the nature of the relationship, I, I feel. Got it, got it. And thank you very much, Shams. Um, Larry, go ahead. I think Michelle kind of needs to get some clarity around, well, you think of relationships and you want this person in, in your life and then that next decision would be how, if it's a yes, then how do you want to relate to this person? Do you want him as a friend? Do you want him as a, uh, do you have him as an intimate relationship or to your boyfriend? And once you make those decisions of yes or no, and if it's a yes, then I think you're really going to need to, how do you really invite him back into your life? And I know Dr. Dan, um, <laughs> Dr. Dan is, what, what can I call you? Well, that's we talked about part. key, okay, as, as communication is a real important piece in being able to talk to the, talk to this person about your feelings and about your fear and what went on and then state how you want to invite him back into your life or how you would 
choose not to have it in your life. And I, I believe in uh, this. Have to be the wellness they had. We have like stuff online that they can for helping people with communication. You know, um, like an outline or something of how to talk to someone about certain subjects and things. Well, we could definitely yeah, and, and send her something via email and we can find a nice little outline and exercise to help to, to start that process. Yeah. So um, it sounds like that isn't going on right now. There's a lot of. You know, this, everything is very ambiguous. I see them, and you know, I'm, I'm kind of feeling things are changing. But what's the next step? You can dwell in this this place of ambiguity, but that doesn't really that's a nothingness. That's a neutral space, and I think it's time for some action. And and and, and so, with yeah. that in mind, yeah. uh, now, Michelle, let me ask you this: Do you want to get back together with this guy? Um, is he sincere? No, I, I, no, I didn't ask that, Michelle. I, I, I actually, actually uh, rephrase that. Delete. Um, again, Michelle, I want to ask: Do you want to get back together with this guy? This is about you. What are your opinions? My my feelings are if he's sincere about where it comes from. Okay, okay. If, if he's not, then not. Okay, okay. So that's fair enough. And say say that you get back together with him, Michelle. What are your intentions? What are my intentions? Yep. What do you want out of the relationship? Mom, I I would like to um. We married in New York. Okay. So, and does he know that? Does he know that about me? Oh, he, he didn't know that. Yeah, so he's known that. So, maybe, uh, okay, so, so one of the things you can do for yeah. now, Michelle, that might I help. I mean, I'm a, I'm a good communicator. He's not a good communicator. Okay. Huh? Michelle, again, uh, we only got a few minutes, so I, I want you to listen to me for a second. One of the things you can do is write him a letter. Okay. Write him a letter, tell him everything you've ever wanted to tell him. Everything. Set some boundaries in, in, in that letter. Uh, from now on, Joe Schmo, I, I only want you to be in my life if you want to be. And, 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 and only under the right, uh, under the guise of right, healthy relationship. Uh, I don't want you to abuse me. I only want you to go out with me two or three times a week, blah, 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 blah. Okay? And then Michelle, and you don't have to show this to anybody, Michelle. Go and, and then offer it up to the universe. The universe, I offered you up this letter. Thank you very much. I'm at Allah. And, and then burn it and let it go. That's it. And it's very simple. So in the meantime, if you want to get a hold of, of, of Dr. Daniel and Shalis, or Shalis, um, at www.vitalwellness.com, um, they, they can help you address okay. some of the other stuff, other things. And maybe give you some other exercises that you can work with so you can move forward with your life no matter what happens. Okay, are you good with that? Yeah, and just um, and just really quickly, something, just, um, just, just some food for thought is something that Daniel and I say um, kind of casually, but it does have a lot of meaning to it. Um, we kind of, you know, half jokingly say it, but it really does have a lot of meaning. Um, we say, choose your exes wisely. <laughs> <laughs> think about, think about, you know, if you're with somebody, you know, and and they are say maybe they are now, and you were with them, and you're thinking about getting back together with them, or um, you know, if somebody was to become an ex in the future, is that somebody that you want to be attached to you for the rest of your life? Is that somebody that you want to be affiliated with? Is that somebody that you want to have children with? So if you can ask those questions, and the answers are yes. Then that's it. You're choosing your active life voice. Absolutely. So, and if the answers are, oh my gosh, no, I okay. would run to the hills. Then, then, then that might help you answer as well. All right. And I want to thank you, Michelle, for stopping by and, and come back okay. and let us know how you're doing. I love it. So now, for the rest of the people, I want to thank you uh, for calling in. Email. Um, we're we're pr pretty much out of time. But uh, what I want to go back and and, and, um, and we are we're going to be bringing in Dr. Daniel and Shalas. In, uh, back in Jan January. So if you want to uh, sign up for the 69 email list on, at spiritualimageproductions.com, spiritualimageproductions.com, you, you can keep abreast of everything that's going on with Andrew, Lola, myself, and I, and Spiritual Image Productions. You go from there. 
In the meantime, there's also a, a calendar there you can check out, and that'll give you um, some more information if you need. So now, um, about the Daniel and, and Sh Shabbos, um, is there anything else we haven't covered that, that you want to cover? We've got about four minutes left to go, but, uh, that you want to just put out there that we haven't put out yet just yet. Well, well something uh, I think for relationships is who were our role models uh, that we didn't you know, get into. There's so much to talk about relationships, but who were our role models growing up because that's who we pattern a lot of our relationships. <laughs> and then there's another concept called recreating the hurt that oftentimes if we grew up in a dysfunctional family or had some issues in our family of origin, we sometimes recreate that as an adult. And that's uh, what they call recreating the hurt concept. Of we, we recreate the same situation, almost trying to find resolution now as an adult in my current marriage when I, there was really issues in childhood and family of origin issues. So that's another layer and, you know, another show talking about how that is um, current relationships and how we play out certain things in our childhood. Got it. Shalos? Um, yeah, I mean, just, you know, kind of speaking back off that, I was, it was funny, so I was actually teaching a college class last night, and that's exactly what I talked about, like, <coughs> creating the heart. Um, but, uh, you know, and something else is really before jumping into another relationship, if you're fresh out of relationship, really taking time to figure out who you are as an individual. Um, you know, what your passions are, what your loves are, who you are. Um, and so that way, you know, you're bringing in someone into your world who compliments you. Um, so that's super important. Because a lot of times we jump from one relationship to the next because we try to help or we try to fix or we find somebody to rescue us or to rescue ourselves. Um, so rather than taking time because it's scary, um, it's super important to take the time to figure out who we are and to heal um, before we jump into something else. Yeah, when people are running, are jumping from relationship to relationship, that we call that codependency. But that is one. Yeah, absolutely. So now we need about three or four more shows. Yeah, exactly right. So, um, do, you, do you guys got any workshops, anything coming up uh, anytime soon? Uh, nothing on the schedule, on the hard schedule for now, but we'll definitely let you know if, if, uh, if it's set up in the near future. No, so beginning of the year, you guys are looking to do some stuff, some events? <coughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm going to... What's that? Uh, presentations. And that's part of our overall goal of Vita Wellness is actually do education, seminars, conferences, and awareness uh, to kind of a similar issues <coughs> like this. Now, how, how long, uh, if somebody does a, 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 this program with you, how long does it take from uh, A to B, from A to Z? From A to Z, typically we look at, we ask for a commitment of maybe three to six months, particularly with weight loss, to make a change and to try to make it successful and just, and uh, lifelong. Sustainable. So we think that it's mm -hmm. sustainable. We want them to teach the schools and the skills to be able to ongoing. So three to six months is kind of where we look at it, and then from there, you know, we go month to month or we see where the individual is at. Our goals have a start and a start. 90 seconds. Okay. Um, so, uh, I want to thank both of you. Uh, Lola, anything else you want to put out there that we haven't put out yet? Um, well, <laughs> we're, we're going to be here. We're in Wisconsin right now and you're going to be in New York next week, so if people want to Touch base with you then uh, for private sessions they can touch base with you then as well. Yes, uh, I want to thank all of you for stopping by. Um, have a God Goddess weekend uh, and uh, be safe out there with all the the, hol uh, the Halloween stuff going on. And also, um, uh, the, uh, for those of you that, that don't uh, remember or regard it, um, the deal that was marked is coming up next Tuesday, so a day that you'll want to regard and, and acknowledge. All your loved ones that have already passed on, which uh, is uh, a great day for that. So, which is what I believe Halloween is really all about, but uh, the commercialized version of it is, um, of course, on Sunday, or I guess, I guess Monday, but that's what I'm You know, have a, have a God Goddess weekend. Be the love that you are. Always have been, and always will be. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful talk radio. Goodbye. And so that is a wrap.
All right. Well, thanks for having us. We yeah. thoroughly enjoyed that. Yes, yeah, so, um, awesome. thank you so much. Yeah, I think you guys were okay with that. Um, and then again, we're, we're, yeah. we're bringing you back in, in, um, in January for, uh, for a, a more thorough, uh, interview on vital wellness and, and, um, go from there. So, um, any questions? Any, any growing summit? You know, you know that was great. No, I think it was good. Really, I'm thinking. <laughs> I, I've had um, a variety of people on, on my shows, including psych psychologists, psychotherapists, all kinds of people. And um, I'm wondering if we shouldn't bring you in on the psychic show. What do you guys think about that? I would love it. Yeah, I think it'd be great. I think, but I would do it. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna let somebody tell me. <laughs> yeah. I, think that, I think that would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we have, um, we have, what's that? I think it'd be a nice combination of Western and Chinese medical, behavioral, and that component that other people. Yeah, the, the, the paranormal. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I, I have, I've done that before, and, um, it's been interesting. Uh, and, and we, we can bring you in, uh, for the November one. I believe it's, the, on the 21st of the month. I can't remember. But I'll, I'll send you a more information on that if you want. And, um, definitely. And then we'll, I think that, I think we should. Because, um, uh, and mostly, um, I don't know if you would want to deal, deal with career questions, but we do have a lot of people that have relationship questions. We get a lot of those part of that. And so, um, I think yeah. we could provide a more, uh, I, I guess a grounded uh, version of, of, of what that would look like to people, and they, I don't know if they would feel better about that, or make, you know, or be more uh, comfortable with that or not. But maybe that would be helpful for them. I'm not sure. So, um, I it'll it'll be whatever you think. What's that? Whatever you think. I mean, that sounds good. I, it, it's going to be November 18th. That's that's when the next one is. <clears throat> so I think you'll be. It's a Friday, Friday night. Okay. Are you are you are you good with that? Yeah. Okay, and Dan, Daniel. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so let's do that. Um, uh, my my psychics. I usually I have uh, two to four psychics on with me, and we all do readings for uh, every one of the people that uh, that well for everyone everyone that we work with uh, that, that comes in. Well, so usually about sixty eight people, or six to eight people, and um and um. And they're usually pretty much thrown away, but but uh, this I think October, or November. I'm not gonna. Um, I think there's a couple people that are gonna be out of town or whatever. But, so um, we'll bring you guys in as well. And I um, I guess I, I was I was surprised how many people. Well, there was quite a few people that came in. So um, um, and that was I don't know if that's, that you guys were comfortable with that. Were you guys comfortable with that at all? But, yeah, we're very flexible. Yeah. So we um. That's kind of what basically the same thing we do on, on the second show is the same thing. So, uh, except, well, well. So, yeah, um, now do you have, now, do you have an actual studio that, uh, we, could, that we could come to? Well, it's in, I live in Flagstaff. I don't know that you want to come all the way out to Flagstaff, but, but uh, I mean, if you want to, if you really want to, you can. Um, but like I said, uh, it, it would be all the way out here in Flagstaff. Unless, unless you wanted to make a whole weekend out of it. And then, um, and then, um, uh, come out here, um, go do some hiking and, and, and then go grab some grub and then, or whatever else. And then, and if you guys can have to hang out for the, for a day or two or something like that. If you want to do that, then we can talk about that. I don't know if that's, you know, if that's too much for you, but, yeah, either way, I'm, I'm getting her my teeth. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, cause, um, yeah, cause I can definitely, you know, look at that or whatever. I wouldn't yeah. mind going up. Yeah, you can, you can come out here on, on Friday, uh, uh, stay the night Friday, Saturday, and then go back Sunday, or if you got stuff going on, you can go back Saturday. Um, but I definitely wouldn't recommend coming out here and then going right back after, because it's been a long time. Right, right, yeah, that's a long time. But, um, we could go, we can go, we can go to sit down, I'll go, go do a hike and then whatever else, and, and some other stuff. So, so. Yeah, that's awesome. Alright, um, and Lorraine, uh, you got any comments, Mom Jones? <coughs> um, no, but I'm, I was sick at the beginning part of the week, so I'm just trying to get my energy back. I, 
don't know if I took some, some kind of poor stuff up, but I was like vomiting and diarrhea Sunday and Monday. And oh, really? So I'm just kind of getting back in the swing of things. Oh, okay. Well, well, well no wonder you've been slow, slow mo for the last couple of days. All right. Well, um, so have you guys got, uh, have you got everybody's good to go? Yeah. Okay, so. All right, so okay, thank you. And um, so, and um, let, let me know um, um, if, soon, if you decide you want to come out here, uh, let me know uh, as soon as you can so that way I can make arrangements with you guys and where we can go from there. Okay. I mean, you guys can stay, stay in my, my apartment, but it's only one bedroom. And one of you guys would have to sleep, sleep outside on the front porch if you want. <laughs> well, it's not that cold I right here. Over <laughs> 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 well, yeah, here, are you kidding? It's pretty cold, man. Forty-eight, I think it's forty.